This is FM sixteen P four Q nine. Also, particle in like a field, two fields, magnetic field and electric field. So, if a particle or charge Q traveling at a constant speed, oh bless! This is a positive charge, so it doesn't have to worry too much about negative charge. So, traveling at a constant speed v in a vacuum, particle enters a uniform magnetic field of flux density b nine point seven times ten negative two, as shown. Okay, so this time they give you a, they told you the direction of the magnetic field out of the plane of the paper, so you can think of oh out of the plane. I usually we draw a dot b out of the plane. So we'll just dot 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 dot, dot everywhere lah. But never mind. I'll just dot the four corners to remind us magnetic field is coming out at your eyes. It's gonna coming out of the screen, going to you like that. Okay, uh, what we trying to do again? Ah, magnetic field is perpendicular to initial velocity. Yes, perpendicular because it's out of the page. Uniform field, electric field is applied. Aha, in the same region as the magnetic field, so that the particle goes undeviated. State and explain the direction of the electric field. Keyword is undeviated. Undeviated means this particle will not deflect. Why? Because. There will be a magnetic force, but also an electric force that cancel each other out. So maybe like this? Is it this direction? I don't know. I'm just drawing a sketch. So I guess we have to figure out what the direction of the magnetic force is first. Okay, time to use the hand. Let's see. Let's find the force acting on a particle. So you can see a little tiny little thing in the corner there, bottom right, bottom right, bottom left. Uh, thumb is force. Pointing finger is the magnetic field where it will be pointing, and of course, your middle finger is going to be where the positive charge will be going, or direction of current. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to point at yourself out of the page. If you're looking at a screen, you point at the screen that's into the page. If you point at yourself away from the screen, point away from the screen that's out of the page, then you need to point your middle finger this way, because that is the velocity. So this would be your middle finger. So point at yourself. Stick your middle finger out. Where is your thumb pointing? Point at yourself. Stick your middle finger out. Hmm. Your thumb should be pointing downwards, and that is where the magnetic field will be pointing. Oh, sorry, magnetic force will be pointing. So means if there's only a magnetic field, the particle should go like that. Curve down, but it didn't. It stayed in a straight line. It means there's another force countering it. So that means, oh, there is an electric force pointing upwards. Actually, let's use pink or purple. Pink lah. This will be your electric force. So that way, the particle will not go up or down, but nice and balanced. So we gotta describe uniform. Uh, where is it? Force ah. Oh, the design describe the direction of the electric field, the E. Oh my my my! So this is a positive charge. That means a positive charge. Hmm, very obedient. If the electric field is this way, then the force on a positive charge is also in the same direction. Okay, this one saves us a bit of pain. So this one will be upwards. Electric field. You know, I'll just save one arrow. All right. So we gotta describe that right here in. For two marks, what you can say is firstly, uh, the answer. I guess state the answer, then explain it. So you say the uniform uh, electric field is upwards. They must say why. Explain, can explain, can explain or not? Because then you say law, because uh, the magnetic force. Is in the opposite direction. Actually, let's say the direction. The magnetic force downwards must oppose the electric force. I'm just writing shortcuts here, so you can write whole sentences. The electric force upwards. So you say F E. On a positive charge upwards. Yeah, this is a pretty complete sentence. Okay, that's what we were saying just now, lor. We first find magnetic force downwards. 
That means electric force must be upwards. Which means electric field must be upwards because this is a positive charge. So that's the flow of step. You can write this down if you feel like you would like to see the steps clearly. First one, the mark is from here. You say where is the field pointing. Then you give your reasoning. That would be the second one here, B1. You say, oh, FP is down. So FE must be up. Hence, E must be up. Okay. Next, calculate the magnitude of the electric field strength. When you see magnetic and electric field together, oh, you got to think of the equilibrium, equilibrium kind of idea already. So once again, I'm going to draw it. You have, you have a, a, a particle where you have a magnetic force downwards, but also an electric force upwards. And they are equal in magnitude. That's why there's, the particle is undeviated, no deflection. So you can say, oh, magnetic force equals to electric force. Equal ma? Then you write out the expression BQV sine theta. Sine theta is 1. So BQV equals to QE. Divide both sides by Q. All you have is BV equals to E. So you want to find electric field strength, right? Okay, so E will be... What's the B? They gave to us just now, right? Somewhere here. Ah, flux density. Look at this right on top of my head. 9.7 times 10 92. That is how strong the magnetic field is in this whole area. So let's write that. 9.7 times 10, negative 2, times V. What is V? Velocity of the particle. Did they give it to us? Yes, they did. Right here. This is our V that we use in our equation. 1.6 times 10 to the 5. So we write that now. 1.6 times 10 to the 5. What's the final answer? We should get about a very, quite a, quite a strong electric field strength, which is 1.55 times 10 to the 4. Should I run off to 1.6? I guess I could, but if there's a further calculation that use this, I will use 1.55. Because 5 is in the middle there. Is 1.55 closer to 1.6 or 1.5? Never mind. I will round off for the answer, but if I have to use this in the further calculation, I will use 1.55. Final mark, A1. A. The other marks come from, if you knew how to go from here to here, that is a B1 mark. Do you know that these two are equal and you know the expressions for them? Then do you plug in the correct equation or not into the E equals to BV? Okay, this one is the equation mark. If I see this equation or I know you don't know how to use it, okay, there All right, so that is here and here. Okay, still okay. Let's look at part C. The electric field is now removed. Oh no, what happens when there's no electric field? Just now, they are nice in a straight line, but now you remove electric field. So this upward force is now gone, removed, no more. Where will the particle curve? Let's draw it. Uh, let's draw it out here so we can see with our own eyes. Now, without the electric field, the magnetic field dominates the particle. So if you have a, uh, let me see, magnetic field out of the page, out of the page or out of the plane, that will be kind of symbolized by dots. Something like that. So you have your positive particle coming in. And it it cannot do a straight line anymore. Because the moment it enters the field, uh oh, there's a magnetic force pulling it down. So this poor particle will now start to do a little curve. Like that. Oh, I should put more magnetic field here. So this is back to our force on force on particles ready lah. Okay, back to circular motion. You can see now the path has become circular. It's not a straight line anymore. No electric field. Just a good old circular motion. Okay, so we want to find, ah, see they give us radius. Mm, so it really should ring some bells. Radius ah, circular motion. Calculate for the particle the ratio of Q over M. How on earth do you get this Q over M? Let's stay calm and do our circular motion. So, mm, you gotta say, the magnetic force provides the centripetal force. Then this centripetal force is what allows a particle to move in a curve, a circular curve. So we're going to equate both of the equations. So BQV, which is the blue FB, equals to expression for centripetal force, MV squared over R. Divide both sides by, by V first. Get rid of the V. V, this one is only one V. So this will be MV over R. Okay, 
how to find q over m can we rearrange this in a way so there's q over m can not Div divide both sides by m so i have bq over m mm, divide both sides by b oh, okay so i have qm over v over brr, br there we go we got our ratio of q over m now very nice so let's calculate what this ratio is what's a v speed of the particle still the same speed right so we can still use our same entrance speed which is 1.6 times 10 to the 5 so we write that long 1.6 times 10 to the 5 meters per second what is the magnetic flux density same one as before 9.7 times 10 to if they never say change oh you assume it's the same lah and lastly radius ah this is a new piece of information Radius of a curved path, 4 cm. So you put 4 times 10 centimeter negative 2. You want to convert to meter, ma, that's why. Okay, so it's Tesla. So your ratio of QM should be 4.12 times 10 to the 7. And this is C per kg. Okay, I guess you could write 4.12 if you want to. 4.12 if you want to. Oh my goodness. 1212. That's A1, uh, if you sub in your correct values inside here, that's your C1. And if you equate both expressions, usually they will get one C1 mark for here for equation. Lah. If they say explain, then they will give you a mark for explaining. Alright, what we want to do with the Q over M ratio? Let's find out. Now, they tell us this particle has a charge. 3E. Use your answer to determine the mass of the particle. Hmm. You see, now they didn't really tell us what charge this thing has, right? They remove, but they say it's some positive charge particle. Some don't know what la, positive, positive particle come in. But now they tell us the charge, 3E. Okay, so we have to use this ratio to determine the mass. How are we going to do that? Let's stay calm and write down the equation. Q over M is what we found earlier, 4.12 times 10 to the 7. 3E is going to be the charge of this new particle that's coming in. Hmm. Or oh, not this new particle, they finally told us a charge. So we can say, oh, if, if it comes at a certain charge, you can calculate the mass because of this ratio. So this will be 3E, so 3 times 1.6 times 10, negative 19. Over the mass, it goes to 4.12, the ratio, times 10 to the 7. Oh, we can find the mass of this new unknown particle. And you should get about 1.165 times 10, negative 26 kg. Yay, the answer is found. So if you write 1.165 times 10, negative 26 k. Wait, 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 wait. Let me scroll up. You see something wrong here? We are saying kg, but they want it in you. Hold up, hold up. They want the mass in you. So if you write this wrong now, this is not the final answer. Oops, whoops. We need to convert to you. How do we convert to you? What is you? U is a constant, uh, a way of measuring very tiny masses. So if you look at the data formula sheet once again, wow, lots of data formula sheet. 1U is about 1.66 times 10, negative 27 kg. So we need to convert though. Okay, okay, we convert. So we divide this by 1.66 times 10, negative 27 uh, kg for each U. What would you get? So if I press my calculator, I should get the M of 7.018 in units of U. Atomic mass units, AMU. So this one will be 7.0 U. My, this was tricky. Almost didn't see that. Okay, one for final answer, one for subbing into the correct equation over here, and that's it. So be very careful of your units. Write a reminder for yourself on your past year if you always forget units like this up here and you don't check, and then it's like, oh no, wrong now. One mark loss. Okay, last part. This particle that we just talked about with the tree E is the nucleus of an atom. Oh, interesting. So it has to be positive only lah, because nucleus ma only got protons. State the number of protons and neutrons in this nucleus. How do you start? 
Well, you see, the mass is 7U. What that means is there are 7 baryons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 nucleons inside there. So, 3 of them has to be positive because the charge is positive 3E. So, this means there are 3 protons inside there. Oh, okay. So, that's 3. So, let's put plus, plus, plus. Everything else has to be neutrons. So out of the seven, one, two, three, four have to be neutrons. Wow, this is a throwback to AS chapter 26. Please don't forget your AS. They are very important, very useful, and you'll keep seeing them appear throughout the entire A2 physics course, A level physics course. Okay, so number of protons three, neutrons four, that would be A1, if you got that down. Okay, so remember, uh, the mass, the reason why we want to show mass in terms of U is so that we know there are seven of them, seven nuclear number, seven. And from there, you can kind of know the protons and neutrons. So what element is this? Uh? Go and figure it out. Check your periodic table. Uh, if you don't take chemistry, go check out the periodic table and see what, what element is this. It has three protons. Hmm. Go check it out. And this is how people study particles, which is, I think, really cool. You just send some particles flying into a field. And then you can calculate the proton and neutron number. And you can identify the particle. How cool is that? My goodness. So this is what people do in labs. Identify particles. Okay, so that's all for this example question. See you in the next one. Go try out a few more about these velocity selectors. E field, B field together in one. And you'll be good to go. Alright, that's all for this one. See you in the next video.